soul. You know, when you're born pure and gentle and um, kind, protective, loving, yeah, that's a soul. You know, just a wonderful feeling to be around some little soul that's not judging you or treating you like you are anything other than who you are. They are, they're part of your life. They're part of your family. Um, they're my kids. Um, they give me joy. I give them joy. Um, they're just wonderful beings. Wonderful. They just make your day. I mean, you know, when you're feeling down, um, they just make your day. They just want to be loved, and um, they want to love you, and they want to give love. So the best thing about my dog is, um, is that I can always count on them. I mean, my babies know when I'm sad, and that's when they want to come pile up in my lap and love on me. and. Um, even cry. I mean, they've even cried when I've cried. They've whimpered and cried um, on on my bad days. Yeah. Both of these have lost their mothers, and I'm telling you, they they know the loss of their mom. They felt the loss, and I'm telling you, it was a, it was a grieving process, just like we do. This this one over here grieved for months. She would never leave his side. She slept with him. She loved him dearly. I think she knew that he was going to be leaving. And when he did, sorry, she um, hunts for him every time I take her down to my mom. So she, she understood that. She understood that. My husband was killed three years ago, and I have a blue pit Maggie. The minute he died, she started crying, and she cried for three days. Cried like tears running down her eyes and making noises. People would come over and say, I can't believe that dog's crying. She cried for three days. They're very expressive. They, they know when you're depressed, they come and sit by you. They, not always just needing pet and they need some attention, but they know when you're up down. And this is my walking buddy. I started walking. He walks two miles a day with me. He runs, I walk. And I can sleep at night knowing if anybody comes in my house, they'll be there. They'll get to him before I can. Society is beginning to recognize the value of pets. I mean, dogs are absolutely, uh, they love you unconditionally. They ask nothing. I like to say it's God spell backwards, <laughs> which it is. And and they do, like Miss Ellie Mae right here. She is just a big bundle of love. Yes, she is. Um, certain dogs have come to me. I just had a little uh, Jack Russell for 19 years. And four days before she died, a little bitty three pound tan, tan and black hound showed up. And it was like that little dog was made for me. And I have her still, she's five months old and she is totally part of me. She's my companion. And I do believe that dogs have souls. I don't, I don't really know if I can explain it adequately, but there's just too much that they know and understand, that they demonstrate that they understand. Um, 
whether it's in training, um, in in um, service to people, you know, like as um, assistance dogs or search and rescue or even police dogs, the things that they know and understand are just on a higher level. This is not just, you know, it's not just a machine. It's a thinking, breathing, feeling animal. I think they're good for the world in, in so many ways. Not only in the services that they do for people, but just in being, just in helping us to relax and breathe and live in the moment. Not to mention all the wonderful things that they do when they're trained to do certain things, like um, sniff out bombs or sniff out drugs or um, help someone who uses a wheelchair to, you know, buy their groceries or open their door or get things out of the refrigerator. I mean, it's, it's amazing the things that dogs can do for us. They were made to be social, social beings. They, they're man's best friend. They, they have each have their own personalities. They, they give us love. They give us attention. They give us joy that in different ways than people can give us. If you have a dog, it will help you get up and get out of the house and walk. I've seen when we take the dogs into the schools, um, especially like in some of the, the special ed classes, when those children see the dogs and we've taken the, the dogs and put them up for the, like the kids with cerebral palsy, for, the, for those kids to just put their hand on the dog and be able to touch its soft fur, you just can't believe the way their faces light up. So dogs definitely are important in many, many ways. They're my family. I, I don't know, they're like my children. I have three boys and this is my fourth boy and this is my only daughter. <laughs> so I love them, they are our family and he's six and she's five. So they've been with us for a little while and they'll be with us forever. All of them, animals of any kind, cats, dogs, guinea pigs, rabbits, they all enjoy affection. Um, I know just from out here at the shelter, just a tiny bit of affection. These dogs will remember you forever. I can pet and love on one this week. I can come back next week and they know me. They're just waiting for you to do it again. Um, they will give back all you give and more. I come home and they're the first ones to meet you at the door and you pet them and you're already starting to calm down from the day. I don't know, they wanna be loved and everybody needs something to be loved. I don't know. When I walk into my door, I'm greeted by eight happy barking puppies and dogs. They make me laugh. The way they interact with each other is just a joy to watch. People think that they don't have feelings. They do. They, they know when they're hurt. They know when they're not loved. They know when they're tossed away. Okay, and, they under, and to them, they wonder why, what did I do? Most people don't believe that. But I see them. I see the sadness in their eyes every day. There, is, there are options. You do not have to kill. something smile at you and love you and miss you when you're gone and be so excited when you come back home and say it doesn't have a soul. I mean of course they have souls. It's how they behave and interact with us on a daily basis. Today we're going to give Bella a cut. She's got some stuff going on up top here. Looks like something sticky. Maybe she got in some mud. 
Um, we're going to clean up her stomach and her sanitary area so when she goes to the restroom it's not icky. We're also going to clean up her hind area because also when she goes to the bathroom that's not going to be too clean. So we're just going to shape her up and make her feel good and get her all clean. Bella was bought by her owner for her daughter was having some issues at school with uh, bullying and stuff. And uh, she kind of just got Bella to be a companion friend for her daughter. And uh, it's worked out really well for both of them. Um, it's helped her some with her social anxiety you can take Bella places and people want to pet her or interact with her. Uh, having a dog in any kind of social situation can kind of be a conversation starter. You know, you go out with your dog somewhere and somebody says, oh, can I pet your dog? Grooming is very important on uh, long-haired dogs, poodles, um, even short-haired dogs have to have their toenails clipped. Because just like us, we have to groom ourselves. And I mean, imagine if you didn't brush your own hair for a month or two, how tangled and matted it would be to your scalp. Well, it's the same way on a dog. They run around outside and get muddy and dirty and they have to be brushed out and cleaned up. It's just like this, you cannot see, but Bella is actually a double coated dog. She looks like she's brushed out and I can understand why because all this is fluffy. But when you actually start getting into where the coat meets the skin, it's tangled. All this hair here where her body meets her leg is actually pretty matted. Now over time if this was not cut this would cause some problems with just her walking. She would probably start scratching in this area to break it loose, um, chewing on it, things like that. Also when it's tangled and matted the dirt gets stuck under there and you can't see it and it can cause skin infections, rashes, skin irritation. It's a great place for fleas to hide. Look how happy she is. <laughs> I've had them come in and they'll be, you know, real tangled and I mean to the point so bad where it's hard for them to walk and they'll look overweight and you go to shave them and you get all the hair off and they're actually extremely malnutrished or underweight and you cannot tell. As soon as they get out of the bath, they're more playful, um, interacting with you. They're just being a dog. <laughs> Her grooming today is probably going to take a, about an hour and a half, and that's with bath, nails, um, you know, haircut, ears cleaned. I'm going to express her glands in the tub. Um, that's also something that the vet usually recommends to be done monthly. But for any type of dog, toenails must be done once a month, baths once a month and some dogs can be bathed up to once a week and that would be for your indoor house pet you know if you just like to keep your house really clean but i mean she is having a blast it's like she knows i've had some that have had bad grooming experiences and after a couple of times here they realize that I'm going to be gentle with them. I'm not going to hurt them. 
they start to, you know, be a little more willing to hand me that paw or let me cut that toenail. You definitely have to gain their trust. Not be scared or nervous yourself because they can sense all that. They may not can talk, but they sure can communicate with us in other ways. Like now, she doesn't want me to hold her foot. <laughs> but that's okay. All right. We're going to go give you a bath now. You ready to get a bath? Please. I really do have to go bathe her. <laughs> all clean and she smells good and I think she knows it. <laughs> Shape up her face because we're not going to leave it like that. <laughs> She's going to be ready for spring. <laughs> you have to have a ton of patience for the animal and, and with yourself. Um, it can be very time consuming and if the dog's upset, that energy can affect me and my emotional state. Also, if I'm upset, that's bad energy that I'm putting into the dog. And sometimes if the energy's not right and it's going a little bit negative, I can step away and take a break. If I need a break, chances are the dog probably needs a break as well. You ready? You know you're done? You ready for your bandana? Huh? You want it? Yes. Oh, yes. You're so happy. Hers was a good girl today. And she feel good. Your mommy's going to be happy, happy. Public, we don't want to bring a dog into Walmart where they sell food and have it be matted with tangles if it's a breed that mats up easy. You don't want to have mud on the dog. You don't want it to smell like a dog because you don't want the dog to be visible. It's medical equipment. Once your dog becomes a service dog, he is medical equipment and that's how you should view him in public. He's not just a pet and that's where we define the fakes from the reals, <laughs> the real service dogs because a fake service dog, their owner just throws the vest on them, takes them in public, good to go. A real service dog, their owner should take pride in the job the dog does. I'm very proud of my dog and how he behaves in public is a reflection of me and how hard I work with him, but it's also his appearance in public. I don't want him shedding all over the place. I don't want us to walk in from the rain and people go, oh, that wet dog. It, it's just one of those things. So yes, we do teach them how to properly care for the dog at service dog standards. Uh, Sindel came to me last year about January time period and she stayed with me about, till no, about November. Um, she was done training in June, like she passed my course and they just came for advanced obedience. Sindel actually was a rescue from a house down the road from her that she's, yeah, she got her from. Um, we don't know much about Sindel's past, honestly. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. All right. A service dog has to know you inside and out. He has to be your best friend, basically. But he has to go a step further and be your medical equipment. There's a bond that is between the human and animal that is needed for service dog work. 
if your dog doesn't want to be with you or want to work for you, he's not going to be a very good service dog. You have to have a connection with that dog. That dog has got to like you enough to work with you. I can tell before we even get to the public access test if that dog really cares for that owner enough to save their life or not. Because when you're training your dog, you really do make that connection deeper because the dog's learning your body language through training. That's, um, it's conditioning the dog to move the way you want the dog to. With, even without you knowing it, uh, for your pet dogs, if you got a little dog and you say sit, and each time you say sit, you bend over and over that dog, the dog will, learns that not so much the word sit means sit, but the body movement of going over the dog, that's what you want it to do. So if you sit on the couch and then tell your dog sit and it doesn't sit, and you're like, she knows this. But then you stand up to give her the treat and she sits. Forrest is a five-year-old German Shepherd. He has uh, been in training since he was seven weeks old. Uh, he was not originally for service dog work, but the handler's dog in training for service dog washed out. Forrest ended up passing the tests and going through with fine colors, and now he is the one that we use. It is so important for a service dog to be in their tip-top shape. They want to be in shape physically and mentally. Yes, the temperament is, uh, is very, very important. Some dogs will pass basic obedience, higher obedience, be perfect pets and uh, all-around dogs but they'll wash out from service dog training because they have a glitch in their temperament where they'll go out in public and they might bark at people or squirrels or a cat. Um, or they have issues with other dogs, which is a big no-no. Um, a service dog is supposed to be friendly with any, ex they're supposed to be friendly and accepting of all strainer strangers or other animals. <laughs> the fakes will be pooping on things, peeing on things, barking at people, growling, biting people. That's a big no-no. Those ones you need to report. Say something to the owner. Not just because there's a dog walking in the store. If the dog's walking in the store, he's in a heel position, he's not doing anything, he's most likely a real service dog. Just because he's not wearing that bright red vest that says service dog does not mean he's not one. Our equipment all varies. Our patches all vary. By law, he doesn't need to have a collar. There's no such thing as paperwork. There's no registrations. There's no certifications. There's no IDs for a service dog. We don't have to tell the public that we are disabled. We just happen to have a friend with us that helps us be there, kind of like a wheelchair. He has medical equipment. I can't stress that enough. Service dogs are medical equipment. They're not our pets that we throw a vest on to take with us everywhere because we love them. Everybody loves their dogs. Doesn't mean they need to be in public. It can go anywhere from six months to a year to a year and a half. Just depends on the dog owner combo. The public access test covers a multitude of different training techniques that make the dog able to be handled in public without disturbing the public. I've had some pick it up so well because they practice all the time and they work so hard and they really want it for themselves. You can't help them if they don't want it for themselves. I work with veterans. Uh, top cases are PTSD, TBIs, things like that. If we see the veteran getting nervous or not really confident in the environment, we start training the t dog to do certain tasks to help his owner handle that environment. It could be so many different things. Um, certain people who have panic attacks need to go to a quiet space. So we'll teach the dog to pull. It can bother a veteran with PTSD if you come up and say, can I pet your dog? Or if you talk to their dog without their permission. That dog's working. So when you're talking to it and looking down at the dog, it's almost an insult to the person. You want to look at their face, talk to them, not their dog. Most of the time, it's what could trigger the owner that makes it taboo for you to touch their dog. So we want to make sure that the public knows that it's not because our dog's not friendly. 
Our dogs are friendly. They have to be friendly to people and animals. They have to be polite in public. They have to be the ideal dog in public. They have to be silent, almost not even noticeable. Um, we don't want you to notice our dogs in public. We know we have a dog with us. It's actually pretty embarrassing when people will announce, oh my God, look, there's a dog. It makes, like, I have PTSD and anxiety and depression, and I've been through a lot of therapy, so it, I'm, I'm able to talk about it, but some people can't yet. And that's why their dog's there, to help them talk about it, help them get on with life. We just need to go shopping like you do. We need that gallon of milk and we got to get out of that store. <laughs> so there's many ways my dog has helped me since getting him. Uh, he's helped me focus on what I really need to do. He, he has saved me multiple times from being laying just cold on the floor in the middle of a restaurant or shopping. He makes my daily life possible. Um, just know, having him with me and him being there for my backup to tell me when I start getting anxious has helped me be more confident to go out in public. He helps me be able to live life again. I became a shut-in about four years ago. I was a shut-in in the house. I didn't want to leave. Getting him helped me focus on something and helped me personally be able to go out in public and regain a life again of a younger woman with a child that's young and wants to go to the park. Um, he lets me go shopping. He, he's just been a, a lifesaver all in all. I think they're good for the world in, in so many ways, just in being, just in helping us to relax and breathe and live in the moment. Not to mention all the wonderful things that they do when they're trained to do certain things, like um, sniff out bombs or sniff out drugs or um, help someone who uses a wheelchair to, you know, buy their groceries or open their door or get things out of the refrigerator. I mean, it's, it's amazing the things that dogs can do for us.